Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you guys are at. I hope you're having a fantastic day. It's all sitting here, and we have the Adventure Deck of Fate event. I'm actually very curious to see how you guys are looking at this one because there's some interesting things that I wanted to break down for you guys. So, if you're familiar with your traditional style of Deck of Fate, this is basically the exact same thing. Um, you upgrade uh, artifacts and accessories, and you get them, and that's how you get points to basically be able to convert into whatever the currency is to flip a card. And the cards have a certain cost rate that you have to, you know, acquire to be able to do it, and then you get a rewards along the way. In addition to that, if you flip multiple uh, of the same rarity, I think three in a row, you'll be able to get like some additional rewards, which we will break down. So it is going to be available from April the 29th at the time of this recording is basically uh, going to be live. Uh, I wanted to show you guys a little bit of it. Um, as of right now, we have like three days and some change to kind of get into it. And you have your 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 full breakdown, right? It's a thousand of these fossil fuel uh, points that you get. But this is the big thing that kind of catches me, uh, uh, like the interest for, for me here personally. So you have your traditional like glyphs, which are great. You have your books. You have your uh, web points, which are associated to the Makage, few, uh, the Titan event. You have your epic skill tunes. You even have some chaos dust. But if you notice, there's Slayer gear in here. Now, for those that have been kind of peeping out or you've been participant of the Forge Passes that we've had recently from Rathlos, which got converted into Slayer, and then the next Slayer that followed up afterwards, um, you do acquire some accessories, but you can't craft them. And then in addition to that, what you got in terms of like particular accessories going towards specific factions, it was randomized. Well, here, if you click on each one of these individually, you'll be able to see that they actually have a designated faction already associated to it. So, before you kind of go off the, the 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 cuff here and just kind of say, "Yes, we're gonna get we're gonna get some more accessories to maybe put it towards any of them," just be aware that they're already pre-designated factions associated to them. So, for example, for the epics, there's already Skinwalkers, uh, Orcs, uh, Banner Lords, Shadowkins, Skinwalkers again. Sacred Order again, and it kind of goes in, in repetition here, even down the road uh, in the different, because there's different ranking and rarities. There's Banner Lords, there's Sacred Order, there's Orcs, and it kind of repeats itself pretty much. Banner Lords, and then you also have Shadowkin. So it's interesting, but I think it's also important to kind of set your expectations to be realistic. Do you have champions in this faction that would benefit from using Slayer? If so, then maybe this might be for you. And then in addition to that, you also have just your straight up, uh, you know, regular artifact pieces that you can use on anybody, right? So there is some value there if you're looking to build up your champions. I think personally that depending on that value that you place on each individual faction will give you credence on whether or not this is going to be something to go for. Now, in addition to that, remember how we talked about flipping multiple cards and you get uh, additional rewards on top of that? It's three that you flip over. If you get like three uncommons, you'll get one of these options. If you flip three rares, you'll get one of these options in the next row. And the same thing for the epic, uh, for the epic chest, right? So for me, how do I see this? If you are, I don't, I, I kind of use this as like a bonus reference. It's not something to go with an expectation of. However, for the uncommon, Ancient Shards, if you're early to mid-game, I could definitely see it being super valuable. You need anything you can get your hands on in terms of shards. The better your acquisition rate of shards, the better you're, or the more quickly you're going to be able to expand your champion pool and transcend into the next phase of your account's progression. Um, Crafting-wise materials, there's Core Hammers. Those are always going to be useful because everybody's always going to be crafting. Uh, if you're anywhere near the wiser, you'll be... I'll always trying to get that next perception piece or maybe even that new slayer piece because you bought the forge pass prior you know those that's how you use it you use those pieces and whatever associated uh you know crafting uh set that you can associate to core hammers it's not for every single one of them i believe but there's a good majority of them that it does use it and that may be some value 300 300 300 000 silver to me is like a throwaway that's very easy to acquire as you're progressing the game for farming in general at a steady pace even free to play or not along the way it's not really that much to, to, to concern yourself with, so that's not big value. 100 gems, couple refills, never hurts. Uh, rare skill tomb, uh, early game rares are valuable. As you progress later in the game, it's very niche, uh, where like they get superseded by better champions or only have specific case uses whenever you're using them in like Sin City, for example, or the secret rooms in Dune Tower. So the value of this goes down as you progress, which progression, depending on how you approach it, can be very rapid. And especially if you get lucky, it can be very, very rapid to a point where this becomes very dated. Um, energy at 150, always a W. We like energy around here. Uh, for the rares, Void Shards, believe it or not, still hold value. I think even all the way up into like late game, end game, as you progress, you're not only looking for specific champions, but sometimes even duplicates of them so you can acquire empowerment um, and, and faction guardians to be on the table. And having access to that, as well as even for ancients for that matter, still holds some value. Of course, gems, it's even more. 
comparatively to your uh, 100 gems on the top row. Same thing with the energy. It's twice as much. Uh, we like those, right? Uh, Chaos Ore. Believe it or not, some of my best pieces have been from translating them over from a bad piece that rolled multiple substat rolls into a re-rolled piece from Chaos Oring into, like, the best piece on my account. So, like, Epic Skill Tombs, Rank 4 Chickens, those are all decent. I think Epics become a lot more, less valuable as you progress in the game, similar to... Uh, the rare skill tunes, but they hold a certain value point even as you translate over into endgame because Sin City has a lot of value with you needing to have a plethora of champions available and having them booked is also going to be important. So this has a little bit more value than this because it's more common in Sin City, but even then, you know, it still has its place. And then, of course, the chickens. I mean, if you can farm up food, then this is becoming less of a, less, less of a focus, less of an issue. Um, the epic chest. This is where it kind of gets big. Six, uh, six star legendary chaos ore. Big deal. Primal shards. It's becoming the meta to have mythics nowadays. It's actually a high value point for someone on my my account in terms of progression path. So primals are very very valuable. Same thing with the eternal soul stones. Uh, as you progress more towards like late game end game, you're gonna notice that the need to have higher blessings becomes a lot more important. And that's something that's kind of big for people to consider as they move up. Like your your shift is gonna be from not only getting better champions, but it's also gonna be like how can I improve my current champion pool? So that's where soul stones play a value in. Scam stones typically get me. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, those are the ones that are kind of hard because I have like a love hate relationship. I love to pull them. I hate to see what I get sometimes, and it's tough. It's it's tough. It's tough. Gems. Still like them. They're even more than what you had before. The Extra Barrel, that one's kind of like the throwaway, I feel like. Uh, it's not hard to level up champions, especially if you have a, a bruise that are accumulated over doing dailies, as well as, like, your clan boss chest. They come in they come in pretty decently. And as long as you're not too, like, using them immediately as you get them, then you should stockpile over time anyways. Legendary books always will be valuable. There's always going to be a new legendary that you're going to have that may come out that may have, you know, a need for. So this is a big value, especially if you're acquiring a lot of champions at a much higher rate than usual. Then you're going to notice that sometimes your legendary skill tombs are going to be falling behind. and You need to catch that up in order to get there. Same thing with rank five chickens. You need you need uh, you need some upgrades. It helps, but it's not that big of a deal comparatively. So like the XP barrel and the rank five chicken, low value. The rest of it's all big value. I think that's very huge. Now they do have their breakdowns and their points in there, and I, I think it's kind of very comparable. Um, getting artifacts pretty much on the higher end side is not bad. Upgrading them is where the big money's at. So it's going to require quite a bit of silver, it looks like, uh, if you're leaning towards upgrading artifacts comparatively to um, getting them. So I definitely would say play to your car, uh, to your account's advantage in terms of resources. And this is only really kind of one of those valuable like areas to kind of push in towards if you have the resources to do so so set your expectations accordingly that's the best thing i could suggest for you guys um with that being said are you guys going to participate in this uh deck of fate event i think i might because i do have a couple of those factions there's some champions that i wouldn't mind getting some extra resources to try to make, make a better build for so maybe maybe slayers actually becoming more impressed upon me as i you know push my endeavors to areas like uh, Hydra, for example, where I'm trying to get more and more damage output, and I'm noticing the payoff as I invest more and more into my champions, which does revolve around including sets like Slayer. So, it's definitely been uh, one of those ones that might have some intriguingness to it myself. Now, with that being said, I'm going to leave you guys with one other little bit of information regarding some of the updates that we're going to be getting here in the near future, which is going to have to do with uh, basically, we have a lot of events that are coming up in terms of progressive. As of right now, we're in the middle of one, I think, Mishinaki. Uh, Lady Kimmy, Jintoro, and Ginzen are all pretty decent champions, particularly Mishinaki out of this this tri or this quadruple effect. Yumiko, a very, very big deal. I actually wouldn't mind getting an additional one myself. I already have one, and I would love to get an additional one on top of that, which tells you something. She's very, very desirable. Um, I think we also have some other ones that are going to be coming up down the road, too, as well, which is going to have the likes of, like, Kira, Martyr, Mighty Uko, Nishak, I'm reading off a list over here. Hegemon, Ursaga, to name a few for Tuesday, April 30th. And then on Wednesday, we're also going to have even more, which is going to include Duchess, Pydrag, Grand Oak Pydrag, which has been really, really impressive in Hydra, by the way. Estra Dream Song, our recent fusion. Ugir the Worm Meter, which was another previous fusion. Bellatar Mage Slayer, I believe that one is an Ogren, if I recall correctly. Yeah, Bellatar here, as well as Little Miss Annie. Now, I know Miss Little Miss Annie got buffed recently, so she might be a little bit more valuable nowadays in terms of, like, really high single-target damage output. I have one, maybe two of her. I'm not entire, entirely sure. Maybe I'll build her up for some for some fun there. We'll have to see. Anyways, with that being said, we got a lot of summoning events, a lot of progressive events. Are you guys interested in doing it, or are you hunkering down because there's a lot of events on the horizon that you may be peeping out? Think Wixwell's Fusion. Hmm. That is coming in May. So, with that being said, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and as always, always remember...
Stay ascended.